Many, if not all of you, have taken biology here at Rockford High School. If you have, you probably know what DNA is. You also probably know the classic double helix shape shown in all of your textbooks and posters. But how do we know that DNA is shaped like this? Your teachers probably told you that two men named Watson and Crick discovered the shape of DNA, making their famous model. This, however, isn't true and isn't the whole story. The whole story begins with Rosalind Franklin, the unsung hero of DNA research. Rosalind was born on July 25, 1920, in Notting Hill, London. World War I had just ended, bringing peace and progress to Britain. There were also growing opportunities for women, as Parliament had just legalized women's suffrage, putting England one step closer to equality. Rosalind was born into a wealthy Jewish family with three older brothers, and at a young age she took part in activities typical of boys, such as playing in nature, sports, and reading. She was competitive and curious, and she knew from a young age that she wanted to go into science. She excelled in school, and as a young woman she enrolled in Newnham College in Cambridge in 1938, studying chemistry. In 1941, she got second honors in her class, and then pursued research on the porosity of coal, doing studies for the war effort for three years and getting her Ph.D. in 1945. She was then appointed to the Laboratoire Central des Services Chimiques de l'État in Paris, where she worked with crystallographer Jacques Mering. This was the turning point of her life, as he taught her how to perform X-ray diffraction, which involved separating light through an object to study the composition and shape, eventually allowing her to make her most significant discovery. She also met and became good friends with Adrienne Weil, a former student of Marie Curie, who inspired her to pursue chemistry as well as embrace the laid-back, egalitarian culture of France. In 1951, Franklin took her knowledge back to London to do research at King's College, where she used X-ray diffraction to study DNA samples to determine the structure. She was able to separate DNA into two forms, a dry A form and a wet B form. Using a machine she had worked on herself, she was able to take her famous Photograph 51 of the B form of DNA. This showed the shape of DNA and was evidence of the double helix. She was meticulous and very careful in her studies and this was a triumph which would give her immense fame. If it weren't for Morris Wilkins, one of her colleagues, their personalities clashed as he was quiet, competitive, and had a strict Britishness about him. She was assertive and independent, preferring a more laid-back approach, like the French. Determined to undermine her research, Wilkins took her photograph 51 without her knowing and gave it to James Watson and Francis Crick, who then developed their model before she did. Because Franklin was humble and didn't like to cause controversy, she never spoke up, so history remembers Watson and Crick to be the first to discover the structure of DNA, and Franklin being second, even though it should really be the other way around. Franklin was then discouraged to continue DNA research, so she left for Birkbeck College and conducted studies on viruses and RNA, publishing 17 papers and laying the foundation for virology. Several years later, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and continued to work until her death on April 16, 1958, when she was 37. She's currently buried in the Williston Jewish Cemetery in London, and even though she's no longer alive, her legacy lives on and impacts thousands of lives. Her DNA studies allowed for more research, and nowadays, DNA tests are used for criminal forensics, genealogy, as well as detecting or diagnosing certain medical conditions. Her lesser-known work on viruses contributed greatly as well, laying the groundwork for studying how to prevent or cure viruses. Rosalind Franklin's work is vital, and she has shaped the world as we know it by doing incredible things. Thanks for watching!